Welcome to church for August 9th, the 11th Sunday after Pentecost. And if you are thinking, this is not church, we are not in the West Parish Sanctuary, we are not in the West Parish Garden Cemetery Chapel, we are not meeting together, how can this be church? Well, remember that the church is not a building or a location, but is the body of Christ. So when we gather in spirit, even when apart, we are the church and this is church. So may it be so for you today, whether you watch at your kitchen table or on your living room couch or on your deck, it is church wherever you are. So let us gather together. The reading for today, the 11th Sunday after Pentecost, is from Matthew chapter 14, verses 22 through 33. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side, while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone, but by this time the boat, battered by the waves, was far from land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning, he came walking toward them on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, It is a ghost! And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. Jesus said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened and began to sink. He cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased. And those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. So the reading for today comes right after last week's reading, the feeding of the 5,000. So if you can go back to that story, you'll remember that everyone has just been said, the 5,000 men plus women and children were sitting down. They ate and the leftovers were gathered up in baskets. And then immediately... This reading begins immediately. Jesus makes the disciples get into a boat. He sends them back across the Sea of Galilee back to the other side. The Sea of Galilee, a real sea, a real lake uh, in Israel, also called Lake Tiberias. It's a pretty large lake, 13 miles long, 8 miles wide, about 64 square miles. And in comparison, Lake Winnipesaukee in New Hampshire, that's about 69 square miles. So they're heading across probably the 8 mile width of the lake, a pretty long distance to go. So they're heading across. And meanwhile, Jesus then dismisses the crowds, those thousands of people that had come, they've eaten, and he's now sending them home. I think he's sending everyone away because he is still grieving the death of John the Baptist, who, as you remember, was killed uh, right before the feeding of the 5,000. And Jesus had gone off by himself, but then the crowds followed him, so now he's taking that time to be alone and pray that he did not get before. So the story for today tells us Jesus off by himself praying, but by evening, the boat is battered by waves and the wind is against them. So it sounds like they are having trouble, the disciples are having trouble making it across the sea uh, back to the other side. By early morning, they're still out there. 
Jesus walks across the lake and meets them. Now, I don't know about you, but when I read this, it seems sort of odd that in the evening, the disciples are out on the lake getting battered by the wind and the waves, and Jesus waits all the way until the morning to walk out and meet them. Did he not know they were in a storm? Or was it not really dangerous for them? Or did he just really need to pray by himself for a while? We don't know. But it's morning, and Jesus catches up with them um, on the lake and meets them. So they're startled, they're frightened, they don't realize that it's Jesus. Um, Peter asked Jesus to command him to walk on the water. If it's you, Jesus, tell me to step out of the boat. So Peter starts walking on the water. He's doing it. He's walking on the water, but then he notices the strong wind. He sees how dangerous and chaotic things actually are around him, and then he becomes afraid. And then he starts sinking. Peter was fine until he noticed the wind and he becomes afraid. Now, I don't know about you, but I have always loved water. The house I grew up in in Concord was on a river. It was on the Sudbury River, so water was in my backyard from the day I was born. I have been in canoes since I was an infant, probably, and canoeing by myself on the river when I was still really young. Every summer, my brother and I took swimming lessons at Walden Pond, and in the more advanced levels, we'd have to swim right out by ourselves into the middle of the pond. My parents have this picture of me when I was little, maybe only, I don't know, six or seven, and I'm sitting in like a tiny little sailboat, you know, with one tiny sail, the kind of sailboat that kids learn on, and there I am, happy as can be, no life jacket, of course, um, in this little sailboat. Growing up, um, my family went on all kinds of ferries and sailboats, whale watches, cruises around Boston Harbor. I always loved the water, uh, was comfortable there, and just found it beautiful and exciting. Until one day, 11 years ago. You may know that there's a place in Agunquit that I go with my daughter every year. It's our special mom and daughter trip every summer. Um, and it's on the tidal river in Agunquit. So when it's low tide, the, the water goes out and this beautiful uh, sand flat is revealed and you can walk across a, over a bridge, over the dune, uh, and then to the beach and of course during low tide, there's all sorts of wonderful things to explore, crabs and snails and birds diving for little fish. And when it's high tide, it's a full river uh, that you can swim in or kayak or the place that we stay has rowboats that you can borrow to row across the river and then over the bridge uh, to get to the beach during high tide. So the very first time that we went to this place in Agunquit, my daughter was just 15 months old. And on the first day, high tide was sort of in the middle of the day and we thought, uh, her dad and I thought, well, we'll borrow a rowboat and take it over. It was a beautiful day, sunny, warm, perfect beach day. We got into the rowboat. I'm holding on to my daughter. She's got one of those, you know, big, bulky orange life jackets around her little <laughs> baby frame. I'm gripping her on my lap uh, and her dad is rowing the rowboat across the river, which really wasn't very far at all. But once we got out in the river, it was a lot windier than we expected. Certainly not dangerous, but he was struggling to keep us going across to the other side and the boat was rocking a little bit. Uh, I'm gripping my daughter. And I peered over the side of the boat and I saw those waves. 
and I looked down and realized I couldn't see the bottom. And all I could think of was if somehow my 15 month old baby scampered out of my arms or fell over and sunk to the bottom of that river. Yes, she was wearing a life jacket, but I couldn't get this feeling that it was totally up to me to hold on to her and keep her alive. I was afraid that I wasn't going to hold on tight enough. I was afraid of her sinking. I was afraid of feeling helpless if she got into trouble. Basically, when I noticed the wind, I became frightened and I started to sink, just like Peter. Now, not literally sinking, of course, but sinking into fear and anxiety, away from the joy of the day, away from trust and faith. So that summer, 11 years ago, rowing across that tidal river in a gunk with, I was afraid of water for the very first time. It wasn't even a storm. It was a beautiful day on a very small body of water with just a little bit of wind and I was afraid. Now storms will come. We will find ourselves on a river or a lake or an ocean and a storm will come. Wind and waves will batter us. They are battering us right now. Are we peering over the side of the boat into the murky water, anxious that we can't see the bottom, worried about the waves overtaking our vessel? Are we afraid of sinking? Are we afraid of a loved one sinking? Afraid that our nation will sink? Are we afraid that Jesus won't show up? Are we afraid he won't reach out a hand to save us if we are sinking? We are in a storm, my friends. How does your storm feel and are you sinking? Or are you afraid of sinking? Are you watching those around you sink? Our faith doesn't promise us that there won't be storms. The disciples faced storms more than once. Storms will come to us as well. But what we are promised is that the Spirit of Jesus will show up, whether in the boat with us or whether coming to us across the water and the waves. In the wind, through the storms, we are not alone. We are not alone through this storm. I've been following Dan Rather on Facebook the last few months and I found his posts so uplifting uh, and wise. There's two that he wrote, one on June 2nd and one on July 17th that I found particularly moving. Um, and I've sort of put them together for you and want to share some of his words because I think it speaks to this moment so beautifully and also the assurance that through the storms, God is with us and there's hope always. So Dan Rather writes this. The United States is not on the verge of collapse. I say this not to minimize the dangers of this moment. They are great. I say this not to negate the pain. It is deep. I say this not to normalize the injustices. They are real and have been festering for far too long. But I've seen this country bend many times. I have seen it face threats from without and from within. I have seen natural and man-made disasters. I have seen currents of hate. I have seen violence and heartbreak. 
One of the hallmarks of my time on this planet is I have seen a lot. And what I have also seen is that this country, because of the best spirit of its people, can bend a lot without breaking. And when it rights itself, it often becomes more just, more empathetic, and more resilient. And women and men of courage, of ingenuity, of resolve have stood up time and time again. They have said some version of, we will not abide. Whatever despair I might feel is tempered with a hope that is growing within me. I will not abide. And I believe most Americans will not abide either. Courage. My friends, there have always been storms, and there always will be. We will move through this. We will make it to the other side in our little rowboat. Even if we're scared, even if the winds come, even if the waves batter the side of our boat, even if we are fearful of those waves, even if we are fearful of COVID or poverty or injustice or racism or unemployment and so on and so on, we still get into the boat and we still head for the other side, trusting that we will get there through the storm. So courage, good people. We are in a storm, but Jesus is with us. Jesus is holding out his hand to lift us up, and this too shall pass. Let us pray. Holy and merciful God, we are all in a boat. Many have said our boats are different. And that is so true. Some are large and well stocked and some are small and have leaks. And so we must help one another across this sea in this storm. We must reach out our hands to one another just as you are embracing us through this. We have so many fears, God. So many worries, so much loss. There is so much to be angry about. And yet, call to us. Reach out your hand and help us through. Continue to help us name our fears, our hopes, our loss. Continue to help us open our hearts to peace and joy, even in the midst of this storm. And so... With your grace, with your strength, with the help and support of one another, we move through this and we say with gratitude the prayer that Jesus taught us to say, our creator who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. My friends, whatever storm you are in today, hold on, hold on, and know that you are not alone. May God grant you peace and strength and blessings this day and always. Amen.